Uh, water, as the topic is, is such a powerful thing because uh, the earthy element is staying in port and the water is the initiator of motion towards the evolution. And that is why uh, in religious cycles we talk of uh, baptizing with water. What it means is that, hey, beloved brother, beloved sister, kick yourself out of the grossest side of this uh, consciousness. And uh, water has initiated a change. So go along with water and keep moving. See, so it's just to kick you, st kick start you, keep going you know, in the evolution pattern. Some are stuck. The lifestyle keeps them on the earthy consciousness, and the water consciousness is higher than the earthy consciousness. So, baptizing with water means elevating you from the earthy uh, consciousness. Beyond the water element comes fire. That is why it is said. A uh, higher master will baptize with fire. Water, therefore, is so important for expressing life qualities. The spirit's expression is made possible when things have been shaken out of the lowest point, which is earthy element. Right, hi, welcome to Jan Cosmic Foundation. And as you know, on this channel, we are into awakening. And today we are looking at the concept of water. And as you know, um, water is one of the basic elements we need in our body. And we have Dr. Bafo Jan here, our usual guest, to help us with the discussion. Good afternoon, Doctor. Good afternoon. We always thank you for your time. Okay. And today we are discussing water. Mm -hmm. Uh, some people say if you don't eat for some specific days, you are going to die. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't drink water for so so and so days, uh, you are not going to exist. Uh, we want to find out uh, what is the essence of drinking water? Mm -hmm. Yes, there are four uh, very uh, worldly elements and the worldly elements we can talk about we have earth okay. followed by water followed by fire followed by air so these four are very much uh, needed on the physical platform, the worldly platform. Okay. And uh, water is the second one. When we are counting from below, earth, water. Now, water, the essence is this. The elements are all spirits in different forms. When spirit is reduced in frequency, when spirit reduces itself in frequency, we come to mind. When mind is reduced in frequency, then we come to something bordering between mind and these elements I just mentioned. So that one is called eta. Eta. Now from eta, then um, the next frequency, lower frequency is air. Air. Yes. So if I get you right, it's from, it's a hierarchy from spirit to mind to ether, then air. Air. Okay. Then from air to fire. Okay. Then from fire, we come to water. And the frequency of water below it is earth. earth. 
So all these are degrees of frequencies. See, for that matter, they all carry consciousness because they are all spirit. Spirit is conscious. But when there is a step down, then the consciousness, the awareness reduces a bit. So when it steps down to mind, the awareness in the mind is lower than that of spirit. Okay. When spirit frequency is reduced and it becomes ether, the ether's frequency is or awareness is reduced. Um, so uh, that also can be reduced further to air. So all these are conscious because their parent, which is uh, spirit. spirit, is all consciousness. It's all aware. Aware and awake. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But then, um, as things reduced, then the awareness is reducing. Consciousness is reducing in degree of expression. Now, when it reduces further from air and we get uh, fire and fire element, the frequency it carries when it is reduced, then we have water. water. Now, water plays a very important role on the external world. We have external, internal. So uh, these basic four, they are for the external. Then we cross the eater to the internal. Internal is the mind, lower mind, higher mind, and so on. Okay. You see. So the external will always uh, function with these four elements. Uh, and uh, water is the second one from below. Now, the essence of water is this. When we descend in degrees of awareness, we read the lowest when it is earth. earth. So the earth has awareness, but it is very down, you see? You do everything to the earthy element and no response. No response. You see, because its awareness is so down. You see, now for returning, see, we descended, but if we are returning to the higher, to back to spirit, spirit. then the first shake up, which is earth, for the earth, when we shake it up in frequency, then we come to water. So water therefore becomes like the beginning of return. Okay. You okay. see, and it plays a very important role in that aspect. So when spirit has come down, 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 down to earth element, for the return, Step one is water. So all the creatures um, expressing or beginning to express life has some uh, quantity water. or some amount of water within them. And that is what makes it possible for them to begin motion, begin mm. to, yeah, to express life. Where there is no water at all, uh, at all, at all, at all, it's really uh, very challenging to have that much activity we call life. Mm. You see? Um, when sometimes the water element is um, scanty, it's small. yeah, it's small. Uh, certain uh, creatures can still manifest in it, but uh, not very boisterous, not very active, not very 
expressive. You see? But as you come along to higher life, there is so much water element mm -hmm. because it permits the flow. You see, it initiates the evolution on another level. So human beings, we have lots of water ah, in our yes, system. Yes, plenty. Okay. And uh, you know from science, it's about 75% of the body, as you see, is, uh, is water. water. Okay. Is it? It's liquid. So, um, beloved brothers and sisters, water, therefore, is so important for expressing life qualities. The spirit's expression is made possible when things have been shaken out of the lowest point, which is earthy element. When you have a vehicle and you are ready to move the vehicle, you actually apply the first gear. Okay. Because the, um, the vehicle is stationary, it's just standing at one point. Um, it is not able to move until you apply the first gear, and after the first gear has set it moving, then the other gears Was can now be, moving. yes. Okay. So the earthy element, the earth, being the lowest frequency, um, it is just, it stays put. But water is the first gear. Okay. So it sets things moving. And you can see it when water is in motion, how powerful it is. Well, uh, then the other things can now um, also follow. So you mean when uh, you have a good amount of water in your system, you have the fire and you have the air and the rest? Yeah, you have all of them, but um, you have more of the water in your system because in actual fact it is the initiator it's a good start yes okay it carries all the starting um, energies uh, frequencies so uh, the awareness the consciousness of water is needed so much to as the base for motion and uh, therefore uh, a lot of water is in our bodies and the uh, bodies of the animals, the plants. Wherever life is expressing itself on this planet, you can see some amount of water, actually. Okay. Mm. We are always blessed to have Dr. Jan with us uh, because we are talking about the concept of drinking water. But, you know, see how he has taken us through everything about the basic elements we have and everything about water and this proves that if spirit reveals himself in you you virtually know everything in fact he knows everything so check down in the description box pick the number of jcf contact us and come and learn something from uh, dr baf wajan uh, doctor let's continue mm. you see we are talking about the concept of uh, drinking water yeah and uh, in this generation uh, most of the time we are used to the sachet and the bottled water mm -hmm. uh, some people also drink from uh, their dispensers and from their gallons and uh, some people drink from the well uh, I remember uh, some years ago we, we used to drink from the streams and rivers but nowadays we don't uh, you mm -hmm. know drink from those stuff um, what is the best water for human consumption? Good. Yes. Um, the natural water, see the way we are designed to function, whatever naturally exists, naturally is available, um, has been 
tuned in to function well with the body. I see. You see? And uh, what from the start, from the ancient time, uh, what has been natural is uh, rainwater. Okay. And also water that springs from the soil, from the ground. So spring water and rain water. Rain water. But I, I don't see people drink rain water. But with spring water, to is, is, is this uh, the, the well or the, the, the rivers and the streams and the rest? Which is which? Yeah. Um, the spring water... The water, in fact, uh, when you look at a river, it will always have a source where it started coming. And that becomes a spring. It springs out. Okay. That's why we call it spring water. So practically all rivers begin with spring. Spring. You see? So it comes right from, uh, from the earth. You see? Um, one important thing to understand is this. The rainwater has a certain level of alkalinity that is alkaline. And uh, the acidity alkaline ratio. We see the rainwater has a certain level of alkaline, alkaline. content. And that makes it tailored for the body. That is how nature, nature is marvelous, you see. So um, what we need in our bodies are exactly provided in the atmosphere. So we need a certain level of pH or uh, the alkaline content. content. So uh, that is provided in the rainwater. Then the spring water, surprisingly the same. It is also alkaline, you see. Now, within time, just as the human has deviated in so many things, that also we have deviated from it. Um, our lifestyle has uh, gone against these natural things. Uh, we make them no more natural. They become unnatural because as they, dis like the rainwater, as it comes, sometimes the manner in which we collect it and uh, how we preserve it, they, they, they can all result in acidity. Okay. You see, that means the alkaline content will decline. Then also the water from the ground, which is also alkaline, uh, it comes out and it flows as a river. Now that river going is carrying that alkaline along, but we don't let it keep the alkaline con uh, state. The, that, that condition, we change it by our lifestyle. See, people, uh, throwing things into it. People, wherever it is passing and is near to humans, we do something to it. See, we make farms along the river yes. banks. And then, what do we do? Sometimes we are spraying the weeds. Mm. We are spraying uh, the pests. And the chemical, the wind carries it into, into the, the water. Okay. Um, it, is, it, it will amaze people to know that if you spray your land here, sometimes over about uh, half a kilometer away, when they go and test on the leaves, they can find some of the chemical you sprayed here. Wow. Yes. The wind carries it that far and drops it. See? So uh, we are doing so much 
um, against the natural things set for us. See? And um, the rivers are affected, and for that matter, they don't remain alkaline as it used to be. See? So most of the water we drink, now even when we take the water from a river or somewhere, we, if it is alkaline, we take it through processes and put chemicals, you know, and then we have the pipe water, mm -hmm. mostly acidic, mostly. And uh, apart from the acidity, there are other things we have placed inside the water which are not good for human consumption, you see. Um, we take advantage of the fact that our bodies adjust. The body adjusts itself to anything you give it over time. So most people's bodies have now been adjusting to pipe water and uh, other kind of water which is acidic. But such adjustments are not the best things, see. If you have, for example, a vehicle, and the vehicle is designed in a certain way, it functions in a certain way, and uh, somehow uh, we have the mechanics, they do it sometimes. If they are looking for some part to put inside somewhere to solve some problem, and they can't get that uh, accessory, mm. they can get that part. They improvise. They improvise. Yeah, yeah. They put all kind of things mm. just to make it go. But how far will it go with that? Because that is not its the original, original thing. That's the thing. question. Yes. You see? So all these adjustments that the body is doing to things we give it, we shouldn't think it is the best. You see? Um, uh, when you let the body adjust, 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 these adjustments are also shortening the lifespan of the body. Uh, if it is uh, functioning in this natural, natural state, it uh, keeps longer and it functions better. See, sometimes people do some little activity and they are tired. Uh, the body has been adjusting to things that uh, it shouldn't, um, I mean, um, bother to do. We give it assignment because mm -hmm. what is toxic, what is poisonous, it has to adjust and be doing things, you see. But you should conserve all these energies through the natural lifestyle. Okay. Should, we shouldn't waste the energy in adjusting to something which is not normal. So that kind of ad advantage of adjustment has a disadvantage because when you keep doing it, your body will not function for too long. Even if your lifespan is long and you keep doing like that, your latter days will be very weak. The past, uh, the last part of your yeah. life, you'll be so weak. And uh, you may be bedridden. And what is the use? Having many years, but you can't actually be expressive with your life. You see? So all these are due to how our lifestyle has mm -hmm. become. Water is very, very important. Yeah. And doctor, I rightly agree with you uh, that we've used some of those chemicals to destroy the alkalinity of, uh, mm -hmm. you see, our, our river bodies. Even in my area there, mm -hmm. most of the mining people have destroyed the river bodies mm -hmm. we have there. We had some natural rivers, Monsieur Gun, Benchrim, and some natural waters that we used to drink from. Mm -hmm. But now go and see, they are no longer there. Mm -hmm. And so I think those into land reclamation and the rest uh, could help reclaim some of our lands mm -hmm. so that we can get good drinking yeah. water, water to drink. But I want to talk about the issue of um, 
the sachet and bottled water. Mm. Mm. Um, you see, one time, I don't know whether it's pure or what, because that is what now we regard as pure. Mm. We call it pure water. Mm. Mm. Last time, uh, one guy came to me with a brand, and I don't want to mention the name of that brand, and they said uh, that one was alkaline. Mm. So they tested with some indicators, and truly it was pH 7. Mm -hmm. They tested the other uh, water and it, it was acidic. Uh, with those bottled water, do you have some alkaline uh, inside it? The secret is this. See, the steady nature. The water from the soil, which comes as spring water, is alkaline. And the sci scientists they study to see what makes it alkaline and the other acidic, okay. you see. Uh, and they discover that uh, sometimes the water seeping through the soil is uh, okay. absorbing certain elements, certain chemicals. Nature provides that to make it um, alkaline. Okay. So, you know, science is imitating nature all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, for example, I have, oh, I had one bottle here, that uh, alkaline cup. Um, so they take some of these uh, things in the soil, uh, certain pebbles from the soil, and uh, they see that when water passes through these things, then the water is changing to alkaline because it's absorbing these chemicals natural mm. from the ground. So they try to analyze these particular chemicals and then they say, okay, then we'll provide it in the laboratory. <laughs> <laughs> Imitation. <laughs> Imitation, you see. So they imitate nature. Mm. So they sometimes gather some from the soil, they dig deep and get some of these particular um, uh, elements and chemicals. And then um, uh, they pass the water through it, you see. So sometimes you have this mechanism, you pour the water in it, the water is acidic, but as it is coming out, they put a pipe there and you take it and it has become alkaline. Okay. And it's selling a lot. People have these machines and they put water in it, acidic, and they get alkaline. But it's the imitation of nature. That is what okay. they are doing. Uh, in a sense, um, somehow it is good, but uh, always nature is the best, see, because when nature is providing, there is a mystery in it. People born in a certain environment, let's say a certain country, um, their bodies are suited for a certain level of the alkalinity. So nature provides it at that place. So nature is amazing, you see. So the, from the soil, the water will have the alkalinity that really agrees with the person or the people living in that area, yeah. you see. And uh, when humans are imitating and they make it, they can make it checking what exactly people in a certain place, um, the that average that they need. So sometimes they provide it, the alkaline content is very high, higher than normal. They exaggerate it, oh, we need to take uh, alkaline, but then they just make it so much alkaline. And yet people living in that area, they require up to a certain point. You see, these kind of things, nature, uh, what we call the subconscious, uh, that is, the mind, the higher mind, it is inside everything. It is aware of everything. Therefore, it provides things that conform with 
uh, people living in that zone or place. See? And uh, it is the challenge is when you travel to another place, then you may not get the water on the same level for you. But um, if it is slightly above or below, that is okay. okay. But sometimes, totally acidic, you go across it. And uh, some of the sachet water, uh, plenty of them actually, they are acidic, <laughs> you see. And uh, very few are having the alkaline content because they know these uh, chemicals which you add and uh, the alkalinity comes up because they have studied what comes from the ground, which is alkaline and what is inside it from the ground. So they provide it externally for the water to become alkaline. But unfortunately, they don't have measure if of uh, how particular people in a particular place uh, will need their alkalinity level. You see, even in a particular place, it is average because somebody inside there might need a little bit more, somebody a little bit less, and so on, all this. But on the average, it is okay for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you're imitating nature, then maybe we should also consider the people around the area consuming yes. the yes. water. Yeah. And I don't even want to talk about um, the, the bottled water, the, the, the harmful effect mm -hmm. on the human health and our environment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, there are some people, fruitarians, mm -hmm. Uh, they also have a belief that aside getting the water from the spring directly, mm. uh, you can also uh, take the water possessed by plants. They believe that, uh, as you said, we shouldn't, uh, we should limit the water we take possessed by man mm. and take more of those from plants. Uh, for instance, they believe that some of the plants have, um, you know, deep roots that tap mm. the water deep down from mm. the spring mm. then process this water through its mm. roots and you know puts it in the uh, the fruit and so uh, for instance uh, coconut water for instance mm. Mm. Uh, one guy Aris Latham he's always consuming coconut water mm. Mm. and he believes coconut water is 100 percent water mm. and he said if you are drinking coconut water automatically you are drinking water Mm. If you are drinking the melons, you are drinking water. Mm. And so they believe that maybe some of the higher height fruits mm. that contains water, we should consume them more. Mm. Do they make sense? Um, let, uh, I will answer it as yes and, and no. no. Say, the, when it is processed by the plant, um, depending on the balancing principle, even some of the plants will bring about slight acidity in the, in the fruit. Okay. And then certain fruits have more alkaline, you see. And uh, it is not only the alkaline acidity that is in the fruit, there are other things in the fruit. So when you eat the fruit, the alkaline aspect, you get it. But uh, um, because it has to process the other elements inside the food, water keeps a shorter move. The moment it goes into the stomach, it is going down. The valve opens, opens for the water to go. But when it is fruit, it weighs a bit because the saliva will have to handle, do something to the, uh, the sugar in, in the food, in the fruit. You see, so there is, uh, it tallies a bit, it weighs a bit for certain things to happen before releasing. It doesn't keep long that much, but uh, it weighs a bit. But water goes straight. Yeah, now, it, if you are on empty stomach, you drink water, 
the valve will just open. But if it is fruit, the valve, the subconscious knows everything. everything. So if it is fruit, then it knows there are other things inside the fruit apart from the sugar, uh, the sucrose, uh, the fructose, you know. So um, it uh, tallies a bit to work on it, to add the saliva, everything, and then it opens. That doesn't keep long though, but water is the swiftest. Yes. So it depends on uh, what one is go uh, wants to target. You know, water uh, without any of the other elements, uh, food, uh, ingredients, um, it goes just fast Sweet. and uh, it, uh, it has its purpose that way, okay. you see? Because um, if it is fruit, even when it moves from the stomach down, still it has to go through a little bit of handling to extract some things from it because it's food. The fruit is food. But the water um, is not going to release too many things inside. So it goes it's through the system just straight body. away, you know, okay. like this. So we can't compare fruit juice and the rest to water. water no. is just um, if uh, one is living on, uh, in, under conditions where water is not available, then uh, no option, the best option, of course, will be fruit, liquid fruits, so like coconut, um, oranges, and uh, pineapple, and, uh, and so on. Okay. You see, that one um, is, a, is a substitute. You see, but that is food actually. Yeah. Uh, water per se, it uh, facilitates the other things going on, and it also clears toxic in the system. It does many many things uh, when it is not from the fruit, and uh, when it is from the fruit, then it does other things apart from what the water does. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that advice. Mm -hmm. And. Doctor, I also want to know when and when we should drink uh, water. What is the appropriate time for drinking water? Good. Water drank under certain conditions will give certain results. And for that matter, we look at individuals, what conditions they are passing through. And then we advise how you should drink the water. Say, when you are sick, there is a way to drink water. And what type of sickness, then that also will dictate the way to drink. If it is just for you are healthy, uh, we say prevention is better, better than, than cure. cure, then naturally how you should drink to preserve, to keep yourself functioning at best. That is also there. But um, in general, in general, it should be first thing in the morning when you okay. get up. First thing in the morning? Yes. Right from bed, the very first thing, empty stomach, you drink what alkaline that? water. What's the idea behind that? Good. See, the period you slept, the activities have slowed down. See, uh, all the metabolism, the activities going on in your body during the daytime you are active, they all slow down. And there is a withdrawal of certain activities. For that matter, um, the motion of remnants, food which has been digested and uh, the nutrients have been withdrawn from it, the rem remnants should move on. But everything has become slow because you are sleeping. Sleeping means withdrawal of the energies. So for that matter, 
um, a lot may be like stock. So when you get up first and you drink water to get, uh, restart, let everything start moving, okay. you see, so that um, the toxic can go away. Mm -hmm. Sometimes also, the, even before the toxic uh, side, which we eliminate, even the food gets to the point where uh, we extract the nutrients uh, into the blood. And all that, if this food is too uh, dry, it is difficult to do that assignment, you see. So the water comes in and allows everything to start moving. Like you remember I said, water is like a starter. It's just like uh, the first year. Okay. You see, the earthy element will stay there stuck in your system. And then the water comes and says, hey, keep that. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I can testify to that because when I wake up early in the morning and I drink water, I see uh, I have free bowel movement. Yes. Yeah, and I can do things uh, as easily as that. Yes. So okay. that is it. And it helps to let your system uh, be freed of toxic. Okay. So first yeah. thing in the morning. Yeah. And what again? Because for me, I also... Uh, immediately after eating, I, I, I try and drink some water because sometimes I'm very thirsty. See, um, when you drink the water, apart from cleansing the system, detoxifying your system, the water also makes the blood lighter. You see, it makes the blood lighter. Um, some people have thick blood. When the blood, it has levels uh, that it should be not too um, thick and not too light. Everything is functioning at a certain level. But most of the time in this generation, the lifestyle makes the blood heavier, thicker. You see, when it's like that, it puts pressure on the heart. The heart okay. is pumping, and if the blood is pumping it to circulate, but if it becomes thick, then the heart develops pressure to force. And when it's like that, one gets BP. Mm -hmm. See, so uh, we should, the first thing in the morning when you take water like that, then uh, interval of time, so breakfast, at least uh, 45 minutes to one hour, you know, after the water. Yeah. Of course, something. it can be one hour, two, two hours, it doesn't matter. It depends on what time you get up in the morning and what time you take your breakfast. Uh, well, right after taking the water, um, as it is detoxifying your system, uh, a few minutes later, if you form the habit, it will immediately work down, 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 and then you visit the washroom. The washroom. Then from the washroom, um, you, you, fr right from the toilet, you immediately go to uh, the shower. Then, so it is these steps, drinking water, uh, going to the washroom, and then taking your bath. So once you do these things, then the grosser element has been cleared from you, and uh, your system has been, is what we say, kickstart. Mm -hmm. You have kickstarted uh, things in the body. And then from there, you go to other elements, the fire and then the air element. Okay. You see, fire element, air element, um, you can do some breathing, you can do some exercise. Just a little bit every day is good. Because when you are doing, you are heating up. So you are moving from water to fire. And as you are doing it also, 
the air you are breathing in and out as you do the exercise. So because of that, you have moved from water to fire, then from fire to air. You see, so from morning, you are going to move, clear the earthy element from your system. That is uh, the stool. You pass mm. it, it is the earthy element, and then uh, the water element, you use it to chase out <laughs> the earthy element. Because earthy element, uh, the lowest uh, awareness, lowest uh, consciousness it has. So it shouldn't keep long inside, inside you. There. Okay. You see, when you clear it, you must be as happy as when you ate. <laughs> wow, so if, if yes. you wake up and if you're, if you're able to visit this too, you should be you happy. You should be happy, as happy as when you were eating. Hey, but some people for about three days then they've not ah, visited this too ah, and they are still there. So that is like uh, I used to say, that is not uh, proper eating. Proper eating must end in clearing. Okay. If clearing doesn't go on, you haven't as yet eaten. Because uh, it is, it's not proper. It is not standing for the eating process. See, so uh, it's three stages. You put it in, it digests, you absorb nutrients, things needed, then you eliminate the rest. When these three stages are completed, then it means you eat. Okay. And so, doctor, after uh, taking in the water, mm -hmm. um, taking in the fire and the air, yeah. can you go back to take some of the early elements? Can you eat something? Yeah, you can eat, but uh, remember this. The food you are going to eat should contain all these elements. The earthy element to provide for the earthy in your body must be in the food. The water element should be in the food. So it shouldn't be that dry. It shouldn't be just earthy element. The okay water element must be found in it. Mm. Then the fire element and then the air element. How do you find them in the food? That is a mystery. It's not like going to heat it. No. <laughs> <laughs> you see, if the food is a kind which has absorbed the fire element from the sun, you see, like the vegetables, they all uh, take it from the sun, the fire element and the air element. The air element, even science knows it, that the plants, they breathe in. They breathe in carbon dioxide and release mm -hmm. oxygen. Mm -hmm. You see, this is how the subconscious power works because it's uh, balancing everything. We need oxygen, so the plant will do the opposite way and uh, release oxygen for us. So in this way, uh, uh, we take, when you take the food and it is vegetables, it is fruit and so on, then uh, what happens? What happens is that uh, you have taken earthy element in the food, it is in the fruit, it's in the vegetables. You've taken water, Water element is in the fruit, it's in the vegetables. You take in fire because um, the chlorophyll in the, um, in the plant is always uh, it's working like a solar panel. It's absorbing, yeah, absorbing the sun energies. So that is the fire element and it is inside. Then the air element uh, is absorbing from the atmosphere, the carbon dioxide and trans changing into oxygen. So all the things, elements are inside the fruit. All the elements. So maybe that's why uh, I immediately after eating, I'm very thirsty because I don't use all those elements. Mm -hmm. Mostly my diet is very different. I used to be eating uh, the fufu, the watches and the banku and the rest. So immediately after eating, 
I'm very thirsty and I have mm. to drink water. Mm. Um, that practice is not the best. Because when we have deviated from the natural, our eating habits, um, which are unnatural, it makes us eat things um, which naturally don't have natural water. Okay. The fruit has natural water, and vegetables have natural water they take from the soil. But when we overboil them, then these things are gone out of it. And uh, uh, the fire element originally is gone out of it. So when it is like that, we eat it. That is where we see uh, the need, the feeling that the natural water is not there in the food we have eaten. So we will get the feeling to drink. And the whole thing appears to be very dry. So we feel to drink. But unfortunately, it is, uh, it's not a good habit. Why? Because if it were to be the natural food, when we have eaten it, now, there is a special type of acid uh, which helps the breaking down the food the digestion, the food to, digestion go. to go on. And it is mild. The, that acid is mild. You see, it is only animals which eat meat, like wild animals. They have very strong acid, which helps their digestion. But for humans, ours is very mild. Mild like that of the goats, that of the cows, that of the vegetable-taking uh, creatures. So uh, when it is coming, even though it is mild like that, uh, when it comes, it is just designed to help the vegetables and fruits to uh, digest. Now, when you eat and it is unnatural food, the acidity doesn't change because it has been preset. So that which you have eaten requires stronger acid. Like people eat meat and all those kind of things. It needs stronger acid. And the one which is naturally made for you, functioning for you, is mild. Now you eat it, and that which is already mild, immediately you add water to it to dilute it again. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, we give trouble to our body too much. You see, uh, we keep saying God helps those who help yes, themselves. Yes, yes. God is reaching you through the subconscious mind, the higher mind, and it is helping you, setting everything right for you, but you take it uh, you, you, with our um, objective mind, a small mind, then we uh, put in anything, we do anything, we put in there. Now, then we drink water on top immediately and it dilutes the acid. Once it dilutes it, it keeps longer in the system and uh, when food stays long, um, without moving, then it is changing, it is actually rotting, mm -hmm. beginning to rot, and uh, um, actually uh, it's not helping us. Many people sometimes end up with worms and uh, um, other germs developing in their system, because the food takes long in the system, and uh, when it's not moving like that, then all things develop. Take the example of water, running water versus water that is standing at one place. The pond, see, when the water is stagnant, 
it easily gets polluted. It, it easily uh, gets uh, infect, uh, <laughs> infecting creatures inside it. But the running water um, has less, uh, it is less susceptible, you see. So the same way when the system is running, moving from here, it digests, it goes here, there, smoothly, then hardly do you have the worms, you see. But when it is stuck over here for long, because we diluted the acid and it's not moving and so on, then it gives chance to creatures to, uh, okay. I mean, develop inside it. See, so most of the time people get all these complications and uh, infections in the system. So if you combine um, all those things, the earthly elements, the water, um, the fire, and the air. Um, there will be no shortage of water in the system. Everything will move on uh, smoothly for us. And uh, uh, just a moment. You see, uh, the body language, the subconscious mind is always prompting us about things going on in the body. Okay. So um, when there is shortage of water, the subconscious will prompt us with a feeling to drink. But it must be genuine. You see, uh, sometimes the unnatural lifestyle uh, makes uh, wrong promptings. Let me, let's take this example. Somebody will eat and he's eating to the fail. But let him go take some kind of appetizer or some kind of, let's say, some alcohol or something, it will generate a feeling to eat more. more yeah. See, even though you add to the, f the fill, but uh, it will give you wrong signals. So unnatural, unnatural lifestyle gives us wrong signals in the body. And uh, we overeat, we overdrink, we do everything out of, um, the natural order. Let's see. So if we, we listen to the subconscious, we listen oh. to uh, nature, everything will move on smoothly. Smoothly. For us. Smoothly. Okay. And uh, we also, don't forget, we also have other layers of the body apart from the physical. So uh, the whole eating process goes beyond the physical body and all that goes in, into us apart from the water, the food, the uh, other elements. We also have certain things that go into our system. So if we monitor all these things very well, we shouldn't be sick. We shouldn't have any complications on the planet. Everything should go smoothly and uh, we can grow old and be strong and alert and uh, memory, everything sharp. <laughs> and so those teachings going on, drink eight glasses of water every day and so on. Uh, it's just specific to certain people, as you said. Mm, mm. Uh, it could be for maybe the sick or maybe the weather condition or sure, all those sure. things should be considered. Considered, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Dr. Yeah. John, we don't have enough time, so if you mm -hmm. could wrap up then. Uh, final, final words. Yes. Uh, and yes. We check out. Yes. The final thing is that uh, water, as the topic is, is such a powerful thing because uh, the earthy element is staying put, and the water is the initiator of motion towards the evolution, and that is why. Uh, in religious circles, you talk of uh, baptizing with water. What it means is that, hey, beloved brother, beloved sister, kick yourself out of the grossest side of this uh, consciousness. And uh, water has initiated a change. So go along with water 
and keep moving. See, so it's just to kick you, kick start you, keep going. You know, in the evolution pattern, some are stuck. The lifestyle keeps them on the earthy consciousness, and the water consciousness is higher than the earthy consciousness. consciousness. Yeah. So, baptizing with water means elevating you from the earthy uh, consciousness, to which is the lowest, so that you keep moving. Okay. You see, and beyond the fire comes. Beyond the water element comes fire. That is why it is said, a uh, higher master will baptize with fire. You see? Because when you move from water, then you come to the fire element. See? And this is the reason why um, the present system, the Jan Cosmic, foundation, we are hammering so much the principle of the air. Air is higher than fire. And the air element, techniques to be utilized to lift your consciousness to the air level is even beyond the fire. You see? But these are things uh, maybe sometime later we talk. Mm -hmm. So only people are not aware when I'm giving these lessons whereby breathing techniques are so much involved, it is another way of initiating with air. And it, air is higher than fire. You know, it comes from earth to water to fire to air, then to ether. Then you are entering into uh, higher states, closer to spirit. See, it's a journey. So baptism with water initiates the motion up. Then fire element comes. Then air. So those of you who have gotten the opportunity to have the initiation of air, <laughs> the techniques of air giving you, most of the time you see the breathing, breathe this way, do this this way. It's not a joke. Okay, so how can I be a part of it? Uh, when I want to join, is it, is it that expensive to be a part of Jan Cosmic Foundation? Mm. Oh, um, all the knowledge is free. Knowledge, see, people have been tuned in this material world in the lower realm. They've been tuned to think that um, everything that is valuable must have cost. Okay. So if the thing costs more, then it means maybe it is better. But that is uh, worldly thinking. Because there are things, when you come from the spiritual point, the most valuable things are given free. You see, compare food to water, the solid things to water and to air. Air is more valuable than water. And yet, uh, water is more difficult to get than air, uh, 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 which is more <laughs> valuable. Because if, you, if they seize your breath, how long? But if they don't give you water to drink, how long? I mean, you, you, you can survive maybe up to uh, a week, two weeks, or something, or more. People do dry fasting and other things. They survive. <laughs> but can you... <laughs> <laughs> but if you are selling, if you are selling, let's say, bangu of fufu, if you are selling water, if you are selling air, a lot of us will come and buy the food. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not that expensive to, yeah, to it's, join it's, it's everywhere available. Yeah, so it's for those who are willing to The come. most valuable things of nature are free. free. So okay. this knowledge is free. Anywhere you see coming for this knowledge and you are asked to pay something, it is not for the knowledge. <laughs> it's for the, the, uh, the knowledge is free. The only thing is, just see, we are having all these uh, uh, video uh, 
videography yes. and all yes. these arrangements the equipment and the yes. lighting system and this and that okay. to make it available to you and therefore some Maybe payments some and uh, okay. we arrange for all these chairs here and there i mean uh, these are the things you pay for and the okay. uh, whatever needs to be there to facilitate the giving but it's not that you are paying for the knowledge. No, 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 no. You can't even pay. No, 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 no. <laughs> Nothing equals to it in the material world. All right. Yeah. So if you're really seeking, yeah. just check the links and the numbers down below. Right. Thank you, Dr. Jan. Yes, yes, Thank yes. you also for joining. See you in another video.